As I look out at everybody who's here today, I know that everybody cares about people. And you have that opportunity, no matter what role you're in, to care for people. And it doesn't matter what profession you're in, what specialty, what background. If you're in housekeeping, transport, outpatient services, dietary, um, or if you're a bedside RN, you really have that opportunity to care for people. It's probably one of the toughest jobs in the world. So I'm going to change it up. Um, show of hands. Who here likes a good cup of coffee? And I saw there's a lot, there's a lot on the table. And there's a mug, so we'll get to that in a bit, so don't worry. But I'm gonna actually share a story about coffee. So for those that don't know me, I am uh, an employee at the hospital. I, see, I think I know the majority of the people here. Uh, one day, I was on my way to the front lobby, and I happened to be at the intersection where you get to the front lobby on the left, and then on the right is the cafeteria. And as I got to that intersection, I heard yelling. So my first thought was, do I keep going to the left or do I make that right and see what's going on? I had to see what was going on. So I make the right. So I go over uh, to the individual, introduce myself. I don't have my badge on today. I introduce myself, my name, my role, and I come to find out that the individual who was the source of the yelling uh, was a guy named Steve and his mom was a patient up on one of our units. So I ask Steve, how can I help you? And Steve looks at me dead in the eyes and he says, Vinny, all I'm trying to do is get my mom a damn cup of coffee. And I think, well, this is perfect. We're at the source of the coffee. I will go through those doors and I'm gonna get a cup of coffee for this guy. It's gonna be the easiest thing to do. So I'm about to go in. And he says, but it has to be thickened. Okay, I was like, I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna go in there. We're at the source. We're at the source of the coffee and the people inside that door will know exactly what to do. So I go inside, I say, I'll take one coffee thickened, please. No problem, they give it to me in a minute. I walk up with Steve to his mom's room and he's still angry. He is still upset about the coffee. So I go over to the nursing station. And I say, that guy was so angry about the coffee. And they say, he was, wasn't he? He was so mad, in fact, that he left the unit yelling about the coffee. I said, I know, I found him downstairs at the cafeteria yelling about the coffee. So I said, what happened? And they say, well, there was some delays. There was some delays in getting his mom the cup of coffee. So I ask, of course, what are the delays? Uh, and they say, in the morning, cup of coffee came up. By the time mom drank it, it got cold. Had to send it back, no problem. That was easy enough. At the time that the second cup of coffee came up, her the speech pathologist has seen her and changed her diet order. She had to have it thickened. So by this point, it had to be sent back again. And this was about 12.30, 1 o'clock, so it was already lunchtime. So the lunch rush hour had just begun. So there was a lot of delays in the cup of coffee. So now I'm thinking, okay, it's not just the coffee, it's also the delay in the cup of coffee. But it didn't seem to match how angry he was. So I go over to the room, I knock on the door, and I ask Steve, you know, what, can I come in, can I sit down, and what's going on? Can you tell me a little bit more about what happened? So then Steve looks at me, and he says, Vinny, today is my mother's 96th birthday, and the only thing that she wants for her birthday is a cup of damn coffee. And I'm thinking, well, we got that. Um, but she's still upset. Um, so I, I lean in and I listen a little bit longer and Steve gets very serious. His whole demeanor changes. You could just see he breaks eye contact, kind of slouches back in the chair. And he says, <clears throat> I had a conversation with the medical team this morning, just before I got in. And they gave me a poor prognosis for my mom. She's dying. So now I'm understanding a little bit better um, what's going on. So at this point, he says, and that's not the worst part. So that's not the worst part. 
The worst part is that what matters most to my mom right now is being able to communicate with her four grandchildren. And she can't do that. The only way that she communicates with her four grandchildren right now is over the phone. And she cannot even do that. The reason being, somewhere along the lines of coming in via ambulance, going through the ED, going up to the floor, being transferred to a new unit, her hearing aids had went missing. So now the last few days of, the, of his mom's life, she can't do what matters most to her, which is talk with her grandchildren. So to me, that was devastating because this whole time I'm thinking, this has everything to do with a cup of coffee. And without leaning in, I would have never known. But you can see there's so many different layers to this story. And when you start to peel back and really get through to understand what matters most, you'll see that it is complex. It's complex to understand what patients are going through, what families are going to. But once you get through all the layers, it returns to simple. As I left that room and as I shared with the staff exactly what I had found out, everybody knew what to do. I didn't have to tell anybody what to do. Staff celebrated this patient's birthday. There was a manhunt for these hearing aids. An exception was made for her four grandchildren to come in. And we made sure that Steve's mom had a damn cup of coffee every day. When you really dig in and you really ask those questions about what matters most to your patients, it will become simple. And what you'll find out is that it's not about the coffee. Thank you, everybody.